Good morning, I'm Polarized Moon and welcome back to RuneScape. Today I am playing uh, Recipe for Disaster, which is by far the longest quest in the entire series. And I'm going to be finishing as much of it as I can in this one sitting. Uh, I do know that this is a strange quest in comparison to a lot of the rest of them because it takes place over a long period of time. There's like subquests and stuff. Um, you can start, you can technically start this quest at any time, but to finish it, I still don't think I have all of the requirements to completely finish this quest, as I know that some of the stuff you need uh, later on. I looked up a general outline of the things that I have to do. I'm not like specifics, I just kind of looked up like, oh, these are the quests that I need to finish it, and there are two quests after the Legends quests that are required to finish this. So, um, I won't be able to finish this quest completely until after Monkey Madness. And maybe Desert Treasure, I don't remember, but it's like, up in here. Because there's one subsection of this quest that you can't complete until afterwards. But, I will do as much of it as I can. The other thing that I, I checked out is that I need to have an adult kitten at some point. So, I have my pet kitten here so it can grow up while I'm going on. Um, the average completion time for this quest is approximately four hours. A little bit less than that. Um, and that's if you're just playing through it casually. Um, oftentimes when I'm playing, I kind of stop and have chats with you guys, and then I cut in between episodes, and I, I read everything out loud manually, and I go off on tangents and stories and stuff. So... This is going to be a long recording session for me today. I've got snacks, I've got drinks, I had a Red Bull before we started, and we are going to have a l fun time. I'm probably going to end up recording, like, between five and seven episodes today. So, we're going we're gonna to be in this for the long haul, because I'm going to do as much of this as I can. Uh, first off, I'm going to check my, my cat to see if I need to feed it. Not quite yet, but I have all the things that I need to at, at least get this ball rolling. I know I've been pr you've been pretty active around Lumbridge and drink. Okay, blah blah blah. No thanks. Great, you're back. Did you bring the ingredients I asked for? Remember, I need an eye of newt, a glass of Greenman's ale, a rotten tomato, and a dirty blast. You'll be happy to know I have them all with me. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. Uh, you abs. <laughs> did that really? Oh my god, that actually did complete the quest. Wow. You must absolutely go through the dining room and there to see the feast I have prepared. I simply won't take no for an answer. All right. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So this quest tech, <laughs> it isn't over. Welcome, gentlemen, to Lumbridge Castle. All right, here we go. Uh... Oh, is it... Wait, what just happened? Welcome, gentlemen, to Lumbridge Castle. Oh, for some reason it, it cut out. I welcome Osman, sp spy master of Elmir of Karid. al Karid. I thank you for your hospitality. I welcome the chief guard of the White Wolf Mountain Dwarves. The bear's good. I welcome Pirate Pete from Brain Death Island. Yeah. <coughs> Your rum's got no flavor. I don't remember what voice I gave him. I literally just did that quest. I welcome the chief of the goblin village. Not me. Give me chair. No, it me. Chair mine. I welcome Scratch Uglogwi of the Feldip Hills Ogres. The Ogres, they call me Bone Cruncher. I welcome my neighbor, Phileas the Lumbridge Sage. I didn't have far to travel. I welcome from the town of Edgeville. I welcome Evil Dave. These secret meetings are so evil! A hearty welcome to Sir McVars, leader of the White Knights. Do get a move on. And finally, I welcome the ruler of Epatol, Awawogwe. Awawogwe? Please sit down. <laughs> sit down! <laughs> Great. I think he's lost his amulet of man-speak. Aris seems to be late. And what now? Oh, he's got- <laughs> Oh man, he's got a random event. 
Excuse me while I deal with this. Those those don't exist anymore. <laughs> That's hilarious. We should do something about that old man. Agreed. Oh. No. Oh, they're all getting random events. Wow, another one. Oh, nice food. You come here. Hello. Is is you my dinner? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm back. Did we invite you? Haha, <laughs> your chef did, and now I'll kill you. Mwahahaha! <laughs> uh, are they- is he freezing everybody? Sorry I'm late. I remember you. Ah! <laughs> Tempest assist. Polarized Moon, you must help me defeat this evil. Well, I can try at least. Fantastic. Uh, hold on, let me close this. Um, where did she go? Oh, there she is. Fortune teller. The Kulinar, the Kulinar Romancer. Hi. Hello, that adventurer. How can I assist you? Uh, did this room just get bigger, or get much, much bigger? Ah, uh, that would be the time dilation effect. Time dilation effect. Yes. As time has stopped flowing in the normal way, our eyes are playing tricks on you. As the pictures are absorbed by your eyes, take slightly longer to reach your brain than normal. Uh, what? As everybody knows, time flows from north to south, so my freezing time means this room is apparently stretched slightly along its horizontal axis. Does that even make sense? Uh, don't worry about it too much. It's like an optical illusion. The room is exactly the same size as it always has been, but it appears to be a tiny bit bigger. Anything else you wanted to know? Uh, who's that guy? Uh, you seem to know each other. He calls him the- he calls himself the Q-Lenormancer. He's an extremely evil man with incredibly powerful magics. Kulin a romancer? Oh yes, that's right. He is just as an Onir romancer draws magical powers from the dreams. The necromancer draws their strength from the honors of the dead. Kulin romancer uses food as a source of magical power. Food? What's so dangerous about food? Do not, under uh, do not underestimate the latent power of foodstuffs as a source of magical energy. Not only are they a fundamental life force, but they often evoke great emotional attachment. Do not underestimate him. Part of his strength lies in the fact that this unique type of magic power is quite obscure. I've seen many fall before him. Okay, so he's powerful, but I don't get why he's here. Ah, it's a very old story indeed. A hundred years ago, he worked here in Lumbridge Castle for the Duke as a cook. This was all a pretense, of course. As part of his normal duties, he was allowed to access many exotic and esoteric foodstuffs that allowed him to experiment with his magic and increase his powers exponentially. Building his power was just the first step, however. Uh, how do you mean? Knowing of the regular meetings of Secret Council here in Lumbridge, the Kulinar Romancer decided that he would eliminate all of them as a first step to his plans for world domination. Uh, would that have worked? Possibly, we might never know. As his plans were coming to fruition, his assistants discovered him and used his own magic against him to trap him in another dimension where his powers would be useless. Then how did he escape? Well, the current cook of Lumbridge obviously discovered an ancient manuscript of his ancestors, and believing it to be a recipe, decided to create the spell that banished him. Which obviously seems to have opened the portal enough for him to escape back to this dimension. So, this is partly your fault. Oh, those ingredients. Yes, those ingredients. So, I hold you responsible for assisting me in ridding, of him, ridding him of this dimension once and for all. Yeah, I had a feeling you were gonna say that. Are you clear on what you have to do, or was there something else you wish me to explain? Uh... Nothing, thanks. I don't- uh, I'm sure you have far more important things to do than saving the entire universe. Oh, do I have to- is there something else I need to talk to her about? Oh, do I have to inspect each of them? Hi? Hello there, adventure. How can I assist you? Uh... Wh who are these people? Seems like a random selection in here. The people who have assembled here are the self-styled Secret Council of Gilinor. Self-styled council? What do you mean? 
Many centuries ago a, sm ago, a small group from around the world of Gilanor decided that these lands needed to be directed. It was too risky to leave the fates of this land to the luck of the gods. They decided that every ten years they would meet to discuss current events, and shape how the world might then develop. So they're pretty influential people. No, not really. For all their grand schemes and ideas, nothing ever gets done except every ten years they have a bit of a posh meal together and a bit of gossip. I see. But this evil cook guy just appears appeared thinks they might be important? I don't really know what he thinks. Either way, I'm not prepared to let him get away with a brazen attack on everybody while I have the power to stop him. And given this is partially your fault, I fully expect your assistance in saving them. My fault? Yes, you were the one who provided the cook with the ingredients that just he needed to allow the Kulina Romancer to return to this dimension. I just don't understand any of this. What exactly don't you understand? Uh, okay, so let's inspect these guys and see what happens. You must have cleared a monkey madness to help this monkey. Oh, okay. I get it. So I can't- I can't do that one. You have the Legends quests. Okay, see- oh, alright. So those are the ones that I can't do. How about the dwarf? How do I protect you, I wonder? To protect your short, angry friend from the Kula Romance's magics, I suggest you seek out his father within the mountain tunnel that he guards. His fondness for rock cakes could prove key in feeding- freeing him. Alright. Oh my god, okay, here we go. I must speak to the dwarf's dad in the tunnel under the mountain. Eris said that he likes rock cakes. Alright, so I have to come back here. So how do I activate this if I leave? Do I just go back in the room? Yeah, okay. Alright, so I just go back in the room. So I'm gonna do as many of these as possible that I can do for now. Um, obviously I can't finish all of them just yet. So, I need to get a rock cake? I don't know how to make a rock cake. Um, I'm going to look that up. Uh, let's see. I need, um, a rock cake. Uh, let me, let me pull up the wiki here. Rock cake. A rock cake is something of ogre delicacy, and quite specifically a cake made out of rock. A market stall in the ogre town of Gutanath. Granting six point thigh- Okay, alright. That's where I go. I go to, uh, Yanel, And I go to Gutanath. Alright. Sounds good to me. I don't think I have any rock cakes. Um. Alright, so... The, uh, we're, we're waiting for the cat to grow up, which I guess I need for one of these quests. Um, and then I need to go into Gutanath here, so I, I can just kind of walk in, can't I? I've already done, I've already done all the quests that I need to do this, so I can just kind of go over to the gate and, and go in. Where's the stall here? Aha, there it is. I see it. Alright. Open city gate. Yeah, oh wait. There was a- there was a special way I had to do this, right? I- I think I've stolen one of these before, now that I think about it. Um... Uh, let's see. How do I... I had to like diver- like make a diversion, didn't I? Or not. Alright, that works for me. Um, so which mountain pass are we going through here? Uh... Are we going to the... No, I bet we're- I bet it's the other one now that I think about it. Cuz... let's see. A dwarf's dad in the tunnel under the mountain. So that would be the one near Taverly, I think? Let's try that. So, yeah, as soon as I- I'm gonna finish as much as I can, and as soon as I get to the point where I can't continue anymore, I'm going to then move on to, uh, move on to pass this. But I, I want to get as much done as possible. Okay, so... Here. Are you the father? Welcome, oh great fishing champion. Fear to pop by and use the toilet any time. Thank you. Stop, uh, stop by for a beer one day. Okay, is the guy in here somewhere? 
Um, do I need to feed my cat? Follow our details. 47%. Um, Holloway. Old dwarf? Are you the father? Sun, time bubble, kill and romancer, freeze, rock kicks. I have absolutely no clue what you're all about. Sit down and catch your breath and please explain, please. Okay, your son, the one who guards the tunnel entrance. Oh yeah, good lad he is. Well, he's at a special meeting and he's frozen by the kill and romancer. Okay, you lost me again. I got back from visiting him up top. He's fine. He's in a time bubble. Oh, that. No, no, he's quite okay. That was last week. I need your rock cakes to free him from it. You're delusional. Never would have a gold rock give away his special recipe. Not for all the golden nectar from the rising sun. Can I use the rock cake on him? Uh... Not for all the golden nectar from the... Okay. I have to investigate how to make a beer that Roak likes. I must find a way of making... Uh, make Making Roak agree to help with the rock cake. Is this rock cake not the... Not the correct type of rock cake? Uh... Not... The rising sun. Which... Which... Um... Which... Which one is the rising sun? The... Uh... That's the one in Falador? The blue moon is in Varrock. The rising sun is... Is that in Taverly? I don't... I don't know where the rising sun is. I'm gonna check this one. Yeah, I think this is the rising sun. Okay. Because there's the moon and the sun, and that's the whole, like, the whole joke. Uh... Talk to Emily. Uh, what can you tell me about dwarves and ale? Hmm, they like it? No, I mean, what kind of ale do they drink? Well, I know for sure they enjoy my special recipe. Oh, uh, would you tell me? And lose money? I think not. Uh, I could offer you some in return. How about 200 gold? Uh, you sure you haven't got any more? Just 200, honest. Hand over, then I'll tell you the secret. Hmm. The secret is in the gold. Drop a gold coin into the Asgarnian ale and you get this weird golden ale that the dwarves seem to love. I think they're genetically attracted to gold. Okay, so if I buy an Asgarnian ale? Uh, Asgarnian ale. One Asgardian ale, please. Thanks, Emily. Uh, so now I, I'm gonna withdraw, uh, withdraw one coin from the money pouch. And use it on the Asgardian Ale. Asgoldian Ale. Interesting. Alright. There we go. Works out for me. So yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll finish up I'll I'll bring this uh, recording session to a close when we get to a point where I can't continue. But uh, I'm I'm really excited. This is, this is by far the longest quest in the game. And it, it's like, there's so much stuff to do. I have done part of it, but I've never done all of it. And I, I, I still apparently can't do all of it. Where's the old, old dwarf? Uh. Uh, where'd he go? Um. Is it Rohak? Here, have a drink. You hand the ale to the dwarf who slurps it down in a noise of a thousand seals celebrating a rain of flesh. Is that what I think it is? Maybe. That's from the rising sun. The barmaid will never tell me the recipes she uses. It's divine. Speaking of recipes. No, I swear I'll never tell. Dwarf nurses the very last drops of the pint, as if he'd really like more. Do I have to get another one? Alright. Uh... Okay, let's go get a second one, I guess. Uh, how many of these do I need? Maybe, maybe I have to give him the recipe at some point? I don't know. I have to make another Asgoldian ale. 
has a Goldian Ale. That's hilarious. I wonder if, uh... Uh, no, not the Act Track event. Talk to Emily. What ales are you serving as Garnian Ale, please? Thanks, Emily. Oh, wow. I could buy them for three gold and sell them for almost a thousand? That's totally worth it, actually. Uh, let's withdraw one coin. Use the coin on the Asgardian Ale. The Asgoldian Ale. And now it's worth nothing. I, I spent four gold on it, total. And now it's worth one gold. That's hilarious. There appears to be a coin in the bottom, liked by dwarves. Can they really not tell that it's got a gold coin in it? Like, that's... I mean, maybe it dissolves in the... In the... In the ale, maybe? I don't know, That I guess that would have to be a very strong ale for it to dissolve in there. Uh, Rohawk. Here, have a drink. You hand the ale, uh... <laughs> He slurps it with the noise of a thousand seals celebrating a rain of fish. Is that what I think it is? Maybe. It's from the rising sun. Speaking of recipes, I swear I'll never tell. Um. What? Okay. Do I have to tell him of the... Do I have to tell him what the recipe is? Hold on, let me... Alright, let me look this up. Um, let's see. Uh, freeing the mountain dwarf. Uh, let's see. Where... Wait, is there not a thing tell me, telling me how to do it? Subquest. Oh, I have to actually go to a whole separate page for this. Um, look for old dwarf. Put one... Uh... Add a gold coin by five. Okay. I have to do it five times. All right. No, not Taverly. Okay. I guess I just have to keep doing it. All right. That, that works for me, I guess. I'm going to grab five right now because I don't know if you need to do it sequentially or if it's a, it's a tally. Uh, a little... Looks a little more sober. Alright. Um, let me check my cat. 73%. If it gets to 100, the cat runs away. So that's why I, I just keep keep checking it every so often. I don't know how old... 11%. Uh, Alright. Let's... No, what am I doing here? Uh, let me withdraw 5. There we go. And let's... Uh, Buy five ales. One Asgardian ale. No, not from that. Okay. Uh, Asgardian ale. I... Alright. I guess I have to do it from that first. I, it's interesting that it takes the... It takes the money from your inventory first. Rather than the money from your... From your coin pouch. And there's three. And one more. And got it. Asgarnian Ale. Fantastic. So now let's, uh, now we'll withdraw five. And use on this. Use on that. Use on that. Use on that. And use on that. Oh, god damn it. That's not what I wanted to do. Alright, let's try again. Um, nope, not that. I am doing all the wrong things. One Asgardian Ale, please. And, of course, I need to withdraw one more coin. And use the coin on that. Okay, cool. Now we can go back to Taverly. Hopefully this is enough to get the guy to speak. Um, yeah. And then we'll have to figure out what to do from there. I'm, uh, maybe I should check to see what things I need for this part of the quest. Like, other things. Um, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there.
Uh, maybe I should maybe I should go through and gather all the items necessary for all of these before I even like in between episodes or something. Talk to Rohak. Here, have a drink. Uh, is this what I think it is? Maybe. That's from the Rising Sun. The barmaid will never tell me the recipe she uses. It's divine. Speaking of recipes, nah, I swear I'll never tell. Dwarf nurses every last drop as if he'd really like more. Here, have another. Don't mind if I do. I think you deserve another pint. Don't mind if I do. Your pet is hungry. Okay, uh, use the tuna on my cat. Uh, actually, let me talk to Rohak real quick. I'm sure another pint will go down nicely. Don't mind if I do. Oh, several beers later. Aha. Uh -huh. Um, can I call the cat? Okay, and then use the tuna on the kitten. There you go. Perfect. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Talk to Rohak. Ah, uh, you're better best, mate. You're a good friend, Rohawk. Do you think you could do me a favor? For you, Polarized Moon, for you, I'd slide down a slope of 30th th thistles with no helmet on. You don't need to do that, friend. Just something as simple as baking me one of your wonderful rock cakes. Hmm, for your good friend? For you, anything for a price, of course. I'm sure I have some gold somewhere. How much gold do you want to make the cake? What? That wasn't a dream? Oh, my aching head. Not a dream. You agreed to make me your special rock cake for a fee. Oh. Hundred gold, no less. Also, you need the ingredients, too. Milk, flour, egg, and a bowl of water. Mind it's a bowl and not a dirty bucket. Uh, you didn't say I'd have to run around, but milk, flour, egg, bowl of water, I'll be back. Alright, I don't think I need this anymore. Let's, uh, and I don't think I need the rock cake, either. <laughs> I nearly broke my tooth. Um, alright. Oh, my cat. Uh... Interact with kitten. Uh, stroke. Yeah, there we go. Oh, the kitty. The kitty. Okay. So I need to go get eggs, milk, water. What was it? I don't remember. I do have a handful of those things in my bank, though, so I can go grab those. I also have bowls, I think, so I can just go get a bowl of water. Um, let's see. Pot of flour, egg, bowl of water, bucket of milk. I have most of that, I think. Um, there's a bucket of milk, pot of flour, here's an egg, and I need a bowl. And there's a bowl, which I can use to get some water, just right over here. And that should be... Bowl of water. Uh, there's a water fountain up here that I can use, right? Somewhere? Maybe? Uh, there it is. There's a well. Let's use the bowl on the well. Well, that was easy. This is why I keep that kind of random stuff in my bank at all times. Uh, so that when that kind of stuff happens, I don't have to worry about, uh... Don't have to worry about it. I mean, yeah, that, that kind of stuff is just easy to have a bunch of. Rohak, I got all of your, I got all the things you wanted. I have all the items you asked for. Is that it? I could make these. No, you couldn't. There's a special ingredient, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Well, here's the ingredients anyway. You hand over the ingredients and watch the dwarf make the cake. Uh. Oh, did he just throw it in the fire? Rohak places the cake on the table. There, as good as my word. Hot rock cakes to a special recipe. Dwarven rock cake. Egg. Okay. Uh, red hot and glowing. Ouch. Only for dwarf consumption. Alright, so does that mean that I have everything that I need to, uh... To go bring this... I should return to the banquet and give it to the mountain dwarf. Fantastic. Oh, I think I get it. I am, I'm making food... I'm making special food that will release them from the food magic. So these are all gonna be creating some kind of food-based, like a food-based quest. I understand. I'm learning. 
All right, let's go into that time warp. And there we go. Okay. Um, let's use the rock cake on the dwarf. Or maybe I have to inspect it first. How do I protect you, I wonder? Okay. Uh, use the rock cake on the dwarf? Stop, what do you think you're doing? You can't feed him red hot rock cakes. You'll kill him. Find a way to cool them down. Oh, okay, I'll find a way to cool them down. I hear there's a really rather chilly reception on top of a rather icy mountain. Alright, ice mountain. Okay. Uh... Wait, which one's Wolf Mountain, which one's Ice Mountain? Ice okay, no. Ice Mountain's up where the Ice Fiends are. So I think I'm going to the right place. I, I, in my head, I always get Ice Mountain and White Wolf Mountain mixed up. I think this is Ice Mountain, right? Yes? Yes. Ice Mountain. Okay. Am I supposed to attack an Ice Fiend to get this? Uh, can I use it on an Ice Fiend? Use on an Ice Fiend. Use the Dwarven Rock Cake on the Ice Fiend. Maybe? Uh, no. Alright, I guess I'll attack it? Oh, the Dying Breath cools the Rock Cake. Oh, interesting. Alright, that was easy. And I've got some clay. Fantastic. All right. So, um, let's see. Is that is that it for that one? That one wasn't too bad. Uh, why did I teleport here? What am I? I'm a dumb. I'm a big dummy dumb. Oh, whoops. Uh, I'm a big dummy dumb. Why did I do that? All right, Lumbridge. Cool. I did it. Maybe. Unless there's more that I have to do after this too. I have no idea, but we'll find out. Okay. So now let's go back in here and maybe I can give the rock cake to, well, let me examine it first. Cool and heavy as a brick. Ah, cause it said hot and heavy as a brick. Okay. Use the dwarven rock cake on the dwarf. You've completed a recipe for Dasser feeding the Mountain Dwarf. Oh, so these are all counting as their own separate quest. Oh, that's cool. Good work, adventurer. I've teleported them away to safety. You only have seven council members left to protect. All right. Hey, Pirate Pete. How would I go about protecting this nautical fellow from the curse of the Keel and Romancer, then? Hmm. Wait a moment. My future sense is tingling. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, yes. To immunize him from the Keeler Mancer's attack, you will need to feed him fish cakes. Fish cakes? Well, like chocolate cake with fish instead of chocolate? No, like small bread crumbled dry fishy delicacies. Ah, uh, so how would I make those then? I don't know. I'm a fortune teller, not a cook. I don't suppose it occurred to you to ask the actual cook in the room right next door to us. Oh yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, how do I make fish cakes? Uh, okay, fine. I'll just do that so that I can not have to worry about that. Uh, wow, you were incredible. The way you defeated the Kula Romancer, you made it seem so easy. Um, what? With the foods, the big portal thingy, and everything. I'm just glad you were around, and who knows what could have happened if you weren't able to help us. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have any clue what you... Oh, oh, right, right. That must be part of that whole time bubble thing the fortune teller told me about. So, the cook outside the time bubble remembers me having already saved the council members, even though I haven't actually gone and done it yet. Ugh, <sighs> time travel stuff makes my head hurt. So, I don't suppose you can remember exactly how I defeated him, can you? Of course! Which bit can't you remember doing? Uh, protecting the pirate. I can't quite remember how I managed to save the pirate. The pirate? Ah, you used fish cakes, didn't you? I mean, I did? I mean, yeah, I did. O out of interest, could you help me quickly with that? Can you tell me how to make fish cakes? Fish cakes? As in with fish eggs and fish milk? Don't be silly, that would never work. Can you check to see if there's a recipe for them? Of course. Found it? Apparently you need ground cod, ground kelp, ground giant crab meat, and breadcrumbs. 
All right, where do I get ground cod? Well, of course, use pestle and motor on a raw cod that would grind it up nicely. All right, uh, how about breadcrumbs? Uh, slice the bread into tiny, tiny chunks. Ground kelp? And apparently some kelp patches near the coast of near Remington. Murphy knows more about that. Uh, after grinding, you would get a pestle and motor on it. I'm allowed to get it sorted. Murphy also used to bring in giant crabs occasionally. He hasn't had any of them for a while, though. You better go, best go a word with him, see if he can tell you what happened. Uh, alright. So, do I have cod? I don't even know if I have cod. I might have to go get some of that. Um, I know where to get the seaweed. And I've got bread, so I can cut that up. Or no, I don't have bread. I can cook bread, though, because I remember in the last quest, I... I, uh... Oh, that's right, I can't, I can't deposit that. Alright. Uh, let's empty that hamper so I can just put that stuff in here. Um... Yeah, I don't have any bread. Okay, let's remove some of these placeholders. Uh... Bread... Um... Here? There it is. Bread dough. I can go make that real co Oh, wait. I, I was gonna check to see if I had any cod. I don't think I do, though. I don't. Um, alright, where do I get cod from? Uh, I need... Pirate Pete. There we go. Um, raw cod. Caught with a net in any fishing harpoon fishing spot. Alright. Uh, the most common fish to catch is catherby. Okay, let me, uh, use the bread dough here, and then I'll go to Catherby to get some raw cod. And then, let's slice this. Bread crumbs, there we go. Okay, so one of these is done. Uh, let's go to Catherby and catch a cod. And then I have to use- do I have to get a separate pestle and mortar? Or will the one that I have work? Because sometimes you have to use an item on another item. I don't know. Alright, I can go to the fishing location here, and it was a net harpoon, I think, and it said, and I have to net from the net harpoon spot. Yes? And... Let's go. <laughs> Alright, I guess this is gonna take a while. Aha! Rock hard. Let's go grind. Ground cod. Okay. So now let's go to Port Sarum because uh, Mudskipper Point has the seaweed that I need. Unless I have seaweed in my bank. But I, I guess I need to go there anyway to to get the giant crab. So we're we're getting we're getting there. And we're almost we're almost done with this episode. I'm I'm glad that I got one of them done. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably one of the shorter ones, though. But I guess if they're- if each of them are gonna take me, like, an episode, that would be a lot of episodes. So there's probably some of them that are slightly shorter. Um, alright, let's, uh... There is seaweed just kind of out and about over here, isn't there? Broken fishing rod. Um... You know what? I'm gonna go get it from Karamja. <laughs> I thought that there was some, like, washed up on the beach here, but... I guess I was wrong. Hoo hoo hoo! Alright, thanks, Santa. Uh... Seaweed. There we go. And then... Oh, did he say Remington? I don't know. And then grind the seaweed. All right. So now I need. Oh, I already did the. I already did that quest overview. Um, no journal. Pay repeat. Uh, breadcrumbs, ground cod, ground kelp. Oh, that's ground. Oh, ground kelp. Oh, okay. That's not. That's not right. I need to go to. 
Okay. That that makes sense. I didn't even think about that. I went to the wrong place. Well, either way, that's all the time I've got for this episode. Like and subscribe if you liked the episode. Ring that bell if you'd like to see more. Good night. And we're going to, uh... We're gonna go to, uh, Port Hazard tomorrow. Bye-bye!